Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of trekking through compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Trekking Through Compliance, Episode 37, I Mud. In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we consider the episode I Mud, which aired on November 13, 1967, and occurred on start date 4513.3. A man named Mr. Norman, who has been aboard the Enterprise for 72 hours and strikes, strikes Dr. McCoy as odd. McCoy's suspicions are confirmed when Norman overpowers Ensign Jordan the auxiliary control operator, and redirects the ship. Security guard Rowe reports that the directional controls are now unworkable. Mr. Norman then barges into engineering, increases speed to warp 7, and sets a booby trap to prevent tampering. He hijacks the Enterprise and takes it on a four-day trip to an uncharted planet of robots who exist solely to serve humans. Harcourt Fenton Mud, previously encountered on in the episode of Mud's Women, is the ruler of these robots. He's escaped from prison where he had been condemned to death for fraud and has created an army of 500 robot women. He also created an android version of his nagging wife, or former wife, I should say, Stella. Unlike the real Stella, the androids follow instructions and are forced to shut up when Mud tells them to do so, i.e., former wife, Stella. Mud is being studied by the robots who are accommodating him, but refuse to let him go. The androids tell Kirk that they built they were built by people from the Andromeda galaxy. However, the civilization which constructed them was destroyed by a supernova, and so the androids were left without supervision. They have now found a new purpose in Mud. Spock makes inquiries and discovers there are 207 1,809 androids, and most importantly, they seem to be controlled by some centralized coordinating power. Mud beams androids aboard the Enterprise and then sends down the entire crew. Chekhov is fascinated when he finds that the female robots are programmed to carry out all the activities of which human females are capable. Uhura does not find captivity so unpleasant when she is promised immortality. Mud attempts to take over the Enterprise and strand Kirk and crew on the planet in place of himself. However, the robots do not permit Harry Mud to carry out this plan. They find people too destructive and plan to take over and serve all humans in the galaxy to control them. Spock learns that there are very many robots of Alice, Oscar, and et al. series, but only a single Norman. He speculates that Norman is the central coordinator and suggests that they coordinate their efforts on him. They tranquilize Mud and then claim they need to beam him aboard the Enterprise to cure him. The androids are about to grant the request until Uhura pretends to reveal that this is merely a ploy to get aboard the Enterprise. She claims her motivation is that she wants to be made immortal. The landing party, and including Spock, then engage in a series of illogical and frankly moronic actions in order to confuse and overload the androids. This culminates in the immobilization of Norman himself when Harry tells him, everything I say is a lie. Kirk leaves Harry on the planet with his attendant robots to serve as an example of human failure to them. The robots are also reprogrammed to carry out their original task of rendering the planet fit for human life. As a final blow to Harry Mudd, Kirk leaves behind several android copies of his shrewish wife, Stella. So what's the fun fact from this episode? Well, according to Walter Koenig, i.e. Chekhov, NBC considered making a spinoff series detailing the comical adventures of Harcourt Fenton Mudd after the success of this episode. They assigned Gene Roddenberry to develop the idea, but being busy with with Star Trek and other projects, he didn't have time for it and the series was never conceived. However, Mudd appears in the cartoon version of Star Trek up to his usual tricks, or I should say the animated version. So what are the three uh, compliance takeaways from this episode? Well, the first one is that um, AI, will AI ever take over compliance? And the answer is clearly no. There are those, of course, who don't want uh, uh, AI or, in fact, um, 
technology in compliance, but those are generally lawyers who are afraid of losing uh, their cachet and power as lawyers. They fail to understand that compliance is a business process and that as a business process, uh, you don't need legal skills, you need business skills. But when it comes to AI taking over compliance, there will always be the need for the human nut touch, whether that be interpretation, whether that be a nuance, whether that be guidance, uh, and AI simply cannot fulfill that role. Maybe in 100 years, maybe in 50 years, but certainly not in my lifetime and probably not in your lifetime. Number two, continuous monitoring. It's one thing that was clear from the Evaluation of Corporate Compliance Program's 2019 guidance issued by the Department of Justice in April 2019. Continuous monitoring is um, not a uh, part of your program that's good to have. It's not a part of a compliance program that you should have. It's a mandatory part of every compliance program. The reason being, as a business process, you have to continually monitor that process. And then you have to take that information and loop it back into your compliance program in a continuous feedback loop. This is certainly antithetical to the way lawyers work and lawyers think, and that's why it's important to understand and see compliance as a business process going forward. Because as uh, a business process, you understand that something can take continuous feedback from a continuous monitoring component and move forward. That monitoring can be in your due diligence, in transaction monitoring, in HR monitoring, or a wide variety of other monitorings. And that really leads to point three. As a chief compliance officer or even compliance practitioner, you are only limited by your imagination in the compliance role. Uh, If you take a look at the way the humans defeated the robots in this case, or in this episode, it was through um, illogical and frankly moronic actions and acting. You don't have to be moronic in your work as a compliance officer, but you can be creative going forward. Join us tomorrow where we take up the episode metamorphosis. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. 